Part three, none fancy project, bug out kit videos. We're gonna dig into the kit. I'm gonna explain my system right here, right now. Probably feature length, an hour, maybe over an hour. I would like to end it in this part if I can. Looking in that background again, can you tell which sticker bit the dust? It's a company I do not recommend anymore because they are anti-Second Amendment. So they are gone off the wall of honor in the background. I'll be interested to know if you guys know which company it was. I bet you figure it out because I mentioned it on Twitter. You should probably subscribe to Nothing Fancy Twitter feed. It's free, it's easy, it's a quick way for me to communicate to you. I do many reviews, many videos, fun stuff. So the only official sources for the Nothing Fancy Project are YouTube, Patreon, and Twitter. I have no official Facebook presence, no Instagram presence. Hey, you should do Instagram. I don't have bandwidth, dudes. It's all I can do is your content creator keeping up with what I got. So if you see the Nut and Fancy name on Facebook, it's not me in any iteration. Unless I tell you via video forms and I open up a Facebook feed and I say, hey, this is me, this is the name of it, then you'll know that it's legit. Everything else is an imposter, not approved by me. Same for Instagram. Twitter, YouTube, Patreon for now. October 2018 is when I'm filming this, all subject to change. Thanks for clicking on the video. This is part three, digging into my actual BOK going through the contents. Again, I don't want to oversell it and act like it's something cosmic. It's not, it's going to be stuff you've seen before, but you've never seen it like this. You've never seen it integrated into a system designed to sustain an individual for a minimum of a week. Minimum. Go back and watch part one. It is pivotal. It is foundational to what you're watching right now. And I started that video off by saying what? Another quiz, another quiz. Oh, nothing fancy, I hate it when you quiz us. What did I say at the beginning of that video? You said, don't bug out. Thank you, sir. Whoever that was, you're correct. Don't bug out. There's a lot of romance about it, a lot of nonsense about bugging out and people act like it's all that. It's horrible. Stay put at your place of residence, if at all possible. What we're talking about here is a condition, a set of circumstances, all discussed in part one. I didn't, it was not completely comprehensive, but it's something of when you would have to leave your place of residence. You would have to, to spare your life, get out of town, get out of that place. Maybe it's a flood, hurricane, volcano, whatever. You don't know. Without rule of law, massive riots, don't know. So we do want to prepare for that eventuality. We don't want to over romanticize it and we don't want to oversell the bug out kit principle. For instance, I think some people think that having a bug out kit, man, that makes me pretty much bulletproof when the eventual societal collapse comes. Full on, no holds barred, without rule of law. No. I mean, it may help you, but again, a bug out kit is for short term individual survival. That's all it's for. It's not to solve massive without rule of law. Again, to handle that if and when it comes, it will come, I've always said, sooner or later. You'll be a lot better off being at your place of residence where you have all your stuff, you know the surroundings, and you have a deed to that property, so you have a legal right to be where you are. We bug out only if and when we need to. There I go, recapping some stuff I talked about in part one. But it's important to understand that. There's a lot of nonsense on YouTube and elsewhere about the concept of so-called bug out bags and bug out kits. Okay, so in part two, I talked about the container. This right here, I showed you a detailed breakdown of what I'm currently using, and I introed with my kit, which I'll tell you, is heavy. You know, I'm gonna say it's about 80 pounds. It's at 80 pounds. When we ended part two, remember I said that it's gonna lose weight quickly. You probably had some time to think about that and know why, it's pretty common sense. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but that's where I'm at now. And, and you, again, you gotta tailor it to the individual. Maybe someone cannot even roller bag 80 pounds. You need to find out what they can roller bag and pare down capabilities commensurate with that person's capabilities. Does it make sense? But for me right now, even though I have a bad knee, my foot's bothering me, I've got a twisted wrist, wrist um, I can still do it. I mean, I won't be comfortable, but again, a principle of you know, bugging out is you're not going to be comfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable. Whew. 
here we go. Uh, how long is this video gonna be? At least an hour, be my guess. If you're in a hurry, hit 1.5, two times speed down there in the, uh, the bottom there and uh, that'll work. Uh, make sure you subscribe, support the workload. I mean, I have a lot of viewers over the years that have never subscribed and I meet them all the time. I was like, hey, do you sub? And I'm like, nah, let's check in a couple times a month. I'm like, dude, <laughs> subscribe, support the workload. Work it doesn't cost you anything. And then hit the notifications bell. I, I forgot to tell you guys, pretty much in every video, but a lot of guys never see the videos coming out. It's, an, it's a little bell icon beneath the video if I post this on YouTube, I probably will. It's still going for now. And then join TMP Patreon if you want to. Dollar, five dollars a month. A lot of guys are supporting me over there. I appreciate it. it however, it's still about only 1% of TMPers are actually supporting me in Patreon, which is actually paying the bills. It ain't YouTube. So monetization YouTube is pretty much tanked. And if it wasn't for Patreon, I'd be kind of really minimizing the videos. Maybe one per week, one every two weeks. But in Patreon, I'm doing about one every three to four days, depending on the content. Enough said of that. Oh yeah, hats at nuttingfancybigcartel.com. Nothing Shameless promotion. Now, as far as organization goes in the BOK, I don't really have a total system. In other words, I don't say, okay, in this quadrant of the pack, you know, over here, I want my first aid kit. Over here, you know, I want my ammunition. Over here, I want food. It really isn't that way, and don't get too hung up about where you're putting everything in the BOK. Remember, one of the principles is it's a primarily, uh, it's a primarily wheeled conveyance. If we were backpacking, either with a soft pack or a hard frame pack, then we would be more careful about how we load the pack. For instance, in a framed pack, I would load heavier up top. That's how you usually will do it. If it was a frameless pack, awesome. then I would uh, load the heaviest stuff towards my back. But in part two, I talked about containers for your bug out kit. And I kind of said in making it primarily a backpackable container, I don't recommend. For basically distance, endurance, and you just don't know if you're gonna have an injury, a foot injury. So if you have a 50 pound, 60 pound bug out kit and you don't have wheels on your kit, <clears throat> dude, it ain't gonna work. Let me tell you one thing I did when I lived in Spokane. So I've been working on this bug out kit thing forever. And I used to have a big one in a wheeled garbage can container, like a big one that you'd see curbside, like I don't know how many gallons it is, but the kind, a commercial residential wheeled garbage can container that's and I put my whole family's survival items <laughs> in that container and we rolled with that not rolled but had that available to us for probably like six years that was our survival kit and my thinking was I told you you know I've evolved over the years I've been thinking about this for a long time is you know that I the head of the family the strongest male in the family I would wheel it and my kids and my wife would follow me and we'd go to a temporary bug out location I really broke away from that because it finally dawned on me to have individual kits, again, we talked about this in part two, assigned to each individual. And uh, so I, I backed away from that. And plus it was way heavy because I'm carrying all supplies, food and stuff for four people. And it was like, no, it ain't gonna work. So I broke it down and I think this is the best system that I've come up with so far. Again, all subject to change. We open the lid. Uh, first thing I'm gonna come to is a reflective vest. I think this is really important because uh, you want to be seen. Again, this isn't like, you know, we're sneaking around the woods. Maybe we're sneaking around, depending who's around us. But mostly I think you might have like National Guard coming out to a natural disaster location. You might have deuce and a half rolling down the highway. You might be rolling your bug out kit next to the highway. I think there are some, you might have a rescue entity trying to find you. There are times you want to be visible. So I went out and got just a reflective vest and I can put it on if I need to. Again, it weighs a couple ounces. It does add weight. It does add some storage capability in here, but I can pitch it. I can cash it if I want with a cash like, oh, in this situation, because how things are playing out, I don't need this, I get rid of it. But a reflective vest. Alternately, <clears throat> and I mentioned this briefly at part two, uh, I recommend having a bunch of these on the exterior of your bug out kit so you can find it when the lights go out. Always expect worst case scenario. You're in a time crunch, you have no electricity in your house, and you need to find your bug out kit. Make it easy on yourself, have reflective. So if you go into your basement, your storage location, a storage room, that everybody, all the family members know, 
hey, there's a bug out kit so they can find it with a flashlight with stuff. This is just basically a pant leg retention for bicycling. They're pretty inexpensive. I'm gonna put a ton of links down below in Amazon. Recommend you use them. It gives me like 1.5 cents. <laughs> and I can use it to buy bags like this, which I bought. Hi Sierra did not donate anything to me. No one did. I bought all the stuff I always do that you see in front of the camera. I'm fully independent. You might have different colors, by the way, for different family members. So maybe mine's yellow. The misses could be orange. The kids could be pink reflective. Or if it's not reflective, maybe just different colors of cloth tied around the webbing straps of the kit. Socks. I told you I had no clothing at all in my bug out kit. I kind of lied. I have this. Why? Because they're lightweight and warm, clean socks make you happy. Talk to any soldier who's ever been deployed. Yeah, so I have it in here now. I'm going to break it out into my clothing kit later. Maybe. Remember, this is in no particular order. I'm just digging from the top down how I threw it in. Microfiber cloths. I actually had some more expensive ones that I'm going to show you, I guess, right now. And they served in my kit for, I don't know, a decade or so? And they have been since superseded. It's these ones right here. They're actually MSR. They're backpacking washcloths, a backpacking towel. And they're actually pretty awesome. I like them, but they're heavier than this. And these I've been using in the trailer for years and they're awesome. These are just uh, 3M microfiber cloths and they work as a multi-purpose towel. In an emergency, they could soak up blood. Uh, maybe I should probably put one more in there. So for me individually, I'll have three big ones and maybe two small ones right here. I estimate that it weighs half of what I had with these MSRs. Again, these MSRs are awesome. And they're also super absorbent. You can wring them out and dry them, but so are these. And that's an advantage to living in a trailer, living in a van, backpacking a lot, because a lot of the stuff I'm gonna show you, I've used year after year, year after year. And I'm like, this works. And so I integrate it. To have microfiber cloths. Glasses. Protect your eyes, protect your hearing. I have actually multiple pairs of glasses in here. These are my absolute favorite glasses ever. They're ESS uh, and I have two, two colorations. That's the bronze coloration. I also have the copper coloration right here. I have the flat temple because I'm probably running hearing protection as well. Expect a lot of noise going on. Again, we're expecting worst case. You don't know where you're gonna end up. You're gonna end up in a some type of camp or something where there's a bunch of other refugees. You just don't know. Have that option. Uh, and you could have just particulates in the air. And I'm gonna show you something else which will address that. I have another set of glasses here. I probably don't need these. This is like a Remington interchangeable lens pair. I bought it on sale about 12 years ago. And it's just been in here ever since. So, there we go. So it's in there. I, I don't need two pairs. This has like snapping glasses. I have them in there because they have clear and yellow glasses. But SAWC, I could probably pitch those. And then I have a third pair. These ones are just simple, inexpensive, clear safety glasses. So I'm going to leave these in for sure because I have all the shades right here. Now you may say, in a bug out kit, why do you need glasses? I just made a determination because of my own experience and the way I, I roll. I like them. Uh, realize also, if you have a lot of glare, on your eyes, you'll tire more easily. It's very fatiguing to have a glare episode. Uh, I know because I've hiked, I've snowshoed, I've skied in snow conditions, and if you don't have sunglasses, you get tired very easily. Ask anyone who's done winter sports like that. Water container. This still is my favorite, the Nalgene Canteen. So it'll fit a water filter. It's Mylar, it folds flat. They're pretty durable. This is a 96 ounce container. I covered it back in 2008 with my backpacking systems videos, which I'll put a card in right now. So what we're seeing basically right here is a backpacking system adapted to bugging out. You definitely wanna have a way to store water. Remember what I said in part one, I don't have water in my kit and I don't think you will either. There's just no room for it and there's not enough weight. If you're gonna have the other things which I'm showing you. Now, I didn't have this strapped on the exterior, but this is a closed cell foam pad. I do like having this because you might be bugging out in winter conditions, snowy conditions. This gives you a place to change clothes on. It gives you a warm place to sit on in the snow. Go reference all my snowshoeing and wilderness videos I did years ago, and it was basically setting the stage for this. Like the winter trek series of videos with young men that I did, you saw how cold and windy and you know uh, blizzardy it was when we were hiking out. Uh, plan on that. You just don't know. Again, you may live somewhere where it's warm. You don't have to worry about snow. I do. 
So this is a sitting cushion and it's lightweight. It doesn't weigh anything. I don't put it in the kit. I will strap it or daisy chain it onto the lid. This is a paint strainer right here. And I actually have these in here. They don't weigh anything. And it's to filter out particulates for water filtering. So you're gonna see a water filter come out and, but maybe there's a bunch of wood and debris and whatever in, in your water. Make it easy, extend the life of your water filter by taking out those particulates as best you can. And so I just got some paint strainers. Easy to do, again, they don't weigh anything. And they come in conical shapes too. I use the ones with paper on it, but if they get wet, they're worthless. All these are, are mesh. They're almost like a mosquito netting. You might be in an area where you're dealing with some pretty bad and I'm just going to love with you guys smells. I mean, there might be people who have passed away in the area and you might be dealing with that. You might have a volcanic eruption, ash in the air, Mount St. Mount St. Helens type event. You kind of need to plan on it. That also gets back to my glasses and why I have glasses because I don't want that crap flying in my eyes. And additionally, I'm also going to carry this stuff right here. So air filters, what kind of air filters do I have? Well, I would really like to have a full-on gas mask or a respirator, but those are heavier. The cartridges have a limited life. I don't have size, I don't have, uh, I should say room for it. So I can't do that. So I won't have that, but I'll have something like this. So this is like a charcoal impregnated semi-respirator mask. This one is too. And then I just have basic dust mask too. But you're gonna find in a situation where it's without rule of law, people bugging out, they're gonna wish they had this. And I want you to think 9-11. You remember 9-11 when the buildings came down and all that dust that was in the air and people were getting choked out and they couldn't breathe at all? Like that. Amazingly, I still have integrated into this bug out kit as a pair of inexpensive binoculars. These are Sportstar 3s, I guess, Nikons. They're not exactly super lightweight. I may either get rid of them altogether or pair it down to something like that Dr. Monocular. Are they really important to have for a bug out kit? Uh, I would say kind of, they are, because let's say you do go to a location, not by your choosing, but you're just avoiding hostiles. We'll just call them hostiles. Intelligence, that is knowing what the other people are doing, where they are, how to avoid them is key to avoiding conflict and problems. And so your binoculars are part of that process to say, hey, what's going on? Is this a safe way to travel? Let me scope it out. Are there people over here that mean to do us harm? What's that object over there? Am I really seeing this right? Is that a rescue helicopter over there? Again, with a naked eye, it might be difficult. Now, if you carry, as you'll see in my kit, like a rifle and it has optics on it, maybe you could use those. But again, you're aiming the weapon in the direction of what you're looking at, and that may not go over so big, depending on the situation. Sunblock. This stuff's ancient. I probably have to replace it, but have sunblock definitely in your bug out kit. Doesn't matter what type. I usually like a cream one because you're going to get more for your money. It'll last longer. And I also found that anything that's in a tin can, remember I've been storing this stuff for years and years, can breach and leak. I don't know what happens, but suddenly you'll come in. You remember that pocket I showed you on the other kit that was shredded? Yeah, it was insect repellent, just kind of went cuckoo. So make sure it doesn't leak. And I should probably have this in a plastic bag, but have sunscreen lotion. What do I have, SPF 45? I probably need to huck this because it's ancient again and go to something like 75. There is an alternate to that, my favorite sunscreen. I don't know if I have it over here. Oh, here's something like this. Again, I'm in my man cave, so I have stuff. This actually might be a, an exception. This is a Neutrogena sunscreen. Uh, don't get wrapped up on the name. This is like beach defense, but here we go, SPF 70. And it has a locking lid on it. It is a can, but uh, I've traveled in the motorcycles with this for years, like the KTMs, and I've never had a failure of it. Just a thought. Hats have several hats in there. These are just some old Columbia's I have. They're ventilated. One reason I need hat is to protect my balding head from like the sun so I don't get burnt. Uh, and another one is you're going to see my light that I integrate is an S20 O light. And so it's going to clip right there. This again is from experience. So you're going to see I don't have a dedicated headlamp and I don't, I don't need it because I've had this for years. This is my EDC Light, you'll see another one come out in the kit as we go. But I have some different hats. And I actually have another big old brimmed sun hat around here somewhere. This is additional. And these don't weigh much. And they're nylon, not cotton. So TMP hats would be a good bug out kit hat. They're nylon. This is like suplex nylon. It won't stay wet. It dries. I don't run cotton hats very often. And I recommend you don't either. Gloves. 
Uh, yeah, I'm working, wearing some pigs right now. I don't know why, uh, but I am. And the watch for the review, by the way, is the awesome Spinnaker Rec with a camo, uh, camouflaged NATO strap on it. Awesome. Link below. Review's coming out. It may post before or after this video. I'm not sure. Patreon will see it first. These are Mechanics Originals and Multicam. Good all-around glove. And let me tell you what these superseded, by the way. Um, again, I'm going to show you things that I took out of the kit. I used to have oiled up leather work gloves in my kit. They're good gloves, and I, you've seen them in work uh, here in TMP with me doing knife testing and in the campouts. But they're heavy, and they're impregnated with a waterproofing. They're very durable. But I started thinking about it. I was like, well, again, this is a, at the max. In my way of thinking, a bug out kit is a 30-day system. Do I need leather gloves? You know, the idea to wear it run leather is because they're durable. Well, I think these might work. These right here. So this will last 30 days, even with heavy work. The tips are going to blow out for sure. They always do. But the important part will be there. They'll give you a little bit of warmth when it's cold. Again, your clothing backpack will have most of that to address your temperature and your certain environmental concerns that you have. But have a set of gloves in your bug out bag. Your mileage may vary. You say, I don't need gloves. Now we get into food stuffed in every nook and cranny. Remember what I said in part one? I can't remember it all, nothing fancy. You said so much. Uh, <laughs> I know, but I said it's pretty much all about food, water, and shelter. The rest is extra. So you wanna put food wherever you can. This is just a mountain house, beef stew, and look at the date on it. It's 9-6. This is why you date it. You just get a, a Sharpie magic marker and you put it and date it. I'm not going to replace this. I mean, this will store for 25 years and be completely edible. I'm not going to waste the money. I've eaten freeze-dried meals that are 10 years old and they're fine. And this has been stored in a pretty cool location. Remember, you want to do that for your food. Cool, dry location, a basement if you can. Um, yeah, jam as much food as you can into every location. And then the reason my bug out kit, I think primarily is so heavy is because believe it or not, I've integrated MREs into it. Now, I'm a retired 21-year lieutenant colonel. I've eaten a lot of MREs in my days, and I'll tell you what, they may not be the best food in the world, but they are pretty good food when you're hungry. They're easy to prepare. They're completely self-contained. You don't have to bring a stove. You don't have to heat anything up. They have heaters in them. All they need is a little bit of water. You can heat up the MREs. They provide a ton of calories per day. Was it like two to 3,000 calories if you eat the entire pack? That's a lot of calories. MREs are pretty much my top bug out kit food if, big if, you can take the weight and the bulk. Remember I said caching and the principles of be okay. This is something you may want to cache if you know you can come back to that location. They are heavy, but let's say you have a miraculously seven MREs for just you and you're be okay. But then you go, well, I know I'm going to come back to this location. I can't take them. You could cache them. Protect them from freezing. That's a downside to MREs. They don't like to be frozen. It ruins them. Protect them from heat. It is my number one recommended uh, bug out kit food just because they're so awesome and they're actually pretty good. You put some hot sauce in them. Uh, this is rice and beans with Cajun style sausage. Not my favorite, but it's okay. And I paid $4.20 for it at the commissaries at Hill Air Force Base. So I shopped there. Now, if you want to save weight, go freeze-dried. So, so just do a pre-freeze-dry, uh, pure freeze-dried food option in your BOK, and you're going to save a lot of weight. So keep that in mind. You're going to see a lot of these pouches come out throughout my BOK. Wipes, they're heavy because they have water in them. But, man, are they nice to have. So this can clean your face. It can help clean wounds. It can clean your bum bum, whatever you need them for. They are heavy, they add weight. So remember what I said. Uh, you can always pitch it, you go, hey, I don't mind being dirty, it's too heavy, I can't carry it. Carry it, pitch it, cash it. Uh, for now, they stay in my BOK because they're nice, nice to have. This is actually both backpacking experience talking and also military deployment experience talking. When we're out in the desert, deployed the military is like, hey man, you got any wipes? For all the reasons I mentioned, like, no man, I'm out of wipes. 550 cord. <clears throat> I didn't put it on a, a winder because I don't want to take the weight. So I have a hundred foot hank of just regular 550 cord. Mandatory, just mandatory cordage. You got to have that water bottle. I'll use this for filtering. This is probably not the lightest water bottle. Crap, don't want to promote that company. Hmm, giveaway. So 
I probably ought to put something lighter in this. Again, this one I've had for about 12 years. So it's been serving, it's paid for. Do I keep it in, do I replace it? Maybe. Another MSR water canteen. So I've got two of them. You saw the other one earlier, this one right here. So now I've got two times 96 ounces that I can store. As I eat down on my BOK, it creates more room and it gets rid of weight. Aha! That's what I was talking about. So as we eat that MRE on day one, we just lost, what, a pound of weight? We got more room in the BOK. We come across a water source. We filter with this, by the way, here's my water filter. And I just bought this on sale. It's, I think, uh, MSR Sweetwater. Look for what's on sale. I'll put some links down below. Amazon's got some great deals on water filters. Uh, this is where you don't want to skimp, though, guys, when you do your water filter for your BOK. And I got to spend a little bit of time on this. And this is all related to the videos I've posted earlier. Uh, backpacking videos. Uh, don't bring a straw that you can suck up through a stream. You don't want that. That may or may not be good enough for you as an individual, but it takes time, effort, and you cannot cash water that way. You need something to pump into your canteens, into your water storage bags that will work, right? Because uh, you need to be able to travel down the road. I got to tear that off. Travel down the road with a water supply. If you have a straw, it doesn't work. Also, almost guaranteed, you're gonna have people with you that do not have water filtration. And so you're not just gonna be filtering for yourself, you're probably gonna filter for other people who have somehow attached themselves to you. I did say in part one, you cannot save the world. That is true. I also said, do what you can do. And providing water to people that doesn't have sickness or a GRD in it, is a great service to people. And if you could give a, like a family on the road, like a quart of clean water, it could save their lives. So again, we're gonna do what we can do to help other people have a really high quality, quality water filter. Look at the weight and the size of it and look at its capacity. I wanna have it probably at least 200 gallons filtration capacity before I'd have to change the cartridge. And no, I do not take cartridges with me. Remember, it's a 30 day max system, more like a week, two weeks. Uh, this is a broom sweeper, and I'll tell you why I have that. I know, it's just kind of ridiculous. I have a fanny pack here. It doesn't weigh anything. It's an old Mountain Smith Vibe. Uh, I EDC'd this forever. This is a brand new one. I bought it on sale when it was on clearance, but it's a great way to carry things that you need. So I'm gonna break things out of the toolkit that I'm gonna show you, put it into the fanny pack, and then I have my own EDC system. Don't expect you're gonna have your EDC stuff with you when you bug out. Don't expect you're gonna have your knife. What's my knife today? Oh, I gotta show you this knife. This is sick. This isn't set up. This is a Spec Elite Auto in orange from Cutlery Shop, special edition. Sick blade. Go to cutleryshop.com. They have it there, limited edition. I love the Spec Elite Auto, very cool. Yeah, I'm going auto today. And then my EDC knife is still, uh, yeah, I carry both, Boker FR. So this is paired today along with my other knives that I've shown you before, the lights. I have a cadet with me too. But I'm not gonna anticipate I have those knives with me when I have to get out of Dodge. I may be coming out of the bathtub and there's an earthquake coming down, my whole house is falling around. Would I go run to my, my bedroom and get my pants first? Maybe, but again, you assume worst case scenario, you just go out the door with your two bags, your BOK and your clothing bag. Have everything inside here that you need. But where are you gonna carry it? fanny pack. Huh. Finally, you guys will become a convert to the fanny pack system in without rule of law. Blue towels. Carry as many of these as you can fit in. These are those blue shop towels. You probably see a whole bunch of them back there on top of my, my uh, cabinets there. I love these things. Put them in a plastic bag because I'm anticipating the thing's going to get wet. I don't think this plastic bag is awesome, but it's something and it will at least provide a chance for these to stay dry because of course when they get wet, it's all said and done. Believe it or not, I have a stove in here because I do have freeze dried. I would like a capability to heat up water. And this is probably a source of variety for you guys because you, you may not go with what I'm going with, a cartridge system, which is kind of heavy. It's limited. I get that, but here's the deal. This is from my backpacking experience. It works. It's rare that I've had a bad cartridge and if it's really cold, I can heat it up with a fire coals that I've shown on video here. Not really hot coals, just warm coals. It's really good and it's gonna be paired with the MSR pocket rocket. 
or something like it. I found a knockoff that was pretty awesome, by the way, and it was like only nine bucks on Amazon. I don't know if they're still selling it. If they do, I'll put a link. This is, adds weight. Alternately, you could go with a fuel stove, a multi-fuel stove. You could go with a homemade beer can stove, but I've used a lot of those, and it seems like when the chips are down, the wind's up, they just don't work. They don't produce heat. They're not reliable. And if you have to carry a fuel source, whether it's like, you know, a canister or a fuel bottle, just carry this. I mean, again, once it's done, you just toss it, you lost some weight there. But this will be enough to last a week if I'm careful with it, easily for one person. And that's what this is tailored for, one person. You know, I'm not cooking for a whole clan. It might last two, three weeks if I'm super careful with it. But now I can boil water in my very inexpensive aluminum pot. Do I absolutely need this? Could I pitch it? I can pitch anything. Anything in the BOK, I don't need it. Remember, it's all disposable. I'm like, I need this gone. I pitch it. Maybe I found a you know can of peaches and it's one of those big 32 ounce cans and I decide to use that instead because it's smaller and lighter. But for now, I got this. And it's enough to boil a lot of water and to make food for me. So cartridge stove is, stove is my recommendation. And in 10 years, I haven't backed off on that. This is a signaling blanket. Remember your scenarios and bugging out. It may not be without rule of law. It could very well be um, that you know, you're know you in a hurricane evacuation zone and your house got overwhelmed and flooded and you go bugging out five miles up the road, but you've lost everything, but you got your BOK. But guess what? There's helicopters out looking for everybody. So you wanna make yourself visible. Remember what I said about your reflective vest? So then we transition into signaling mode. We have signaling devices, you're gonna see those. We wear this, we spread this big old orange blanket out, which by the way has uh, instructions on it. It can double as a survival shelter. I talked about that in part two. It doesn't weigh much, you know, it's maybe two ounces. Bug out, blanket. Uh, now I said tailor it for the individual. I'm gonna stick with that. And so I'm gonna show you what I have in here for me, my hygiene devices, but they're just health stuff. So like a foot wrap, a wrist wrap, which I took off from part two, have that in there, extra stuff. Medication that a person needs absolutely has to be in there. Um, just make sure you, you know, adjust it for the individual. I have a uh, fleece cap in here. This is a mount hardware, just an extra one. Doesn't weigh much, I know, it should be in the clothing thing but again since it doesn't weigh much and I had a little bit of room I cram it in there awesome I might be able to do this an hour just over an hour I'm going as fast as I can this is a shovel for digging it cost me all of 97 cents it's made out of polymer not steel I can do a lot of things with this I can dig I can cache things with it and bury it I can uh, you know do my business my number twos and bury it that's important I think it's a good addition uh, just building shelters and having a way to dig, you know, uh, having a shovel. Do I have a bigger shovel, like a folding spade, a Glock spade? Dudes, there's no weight capability for that. Some people say, yeah, put a Glock spade in there. No, put an entrenching tool in there. I'm not carrying around a two pound entrenching tool. Not gonna happen. Here's my knife of choice. And this, a lot of guys who are in the knife show here in TMP will probably wonder what blade do I choose? I pretty much have told you through the knife reviews and a lot of other comparison, competitive offerings, it's gonna be an Ontario Spec Plus, and this one's an SP43. A great all-around survival knife, 5160 steel, proven by me, flat ground, Dan Marogny steel, and for what it is and its capabilities, it's pretty light. I can chop, baton, defend myself with this blade, has an excellent bug out kit level sheath. And in my knife reviews, I talk about this. Like sometimes I don't need a Kitex sheath because it adds weight. For a bug out kit, this is actually the perfect sheath. It protects a blade, it's super lightweight, it's Molly compatible. I could lash this to the exterior on that webbing of this bug out kit and have it at the ready. And it's black, you know, so it blends in. So look at this, I don't know if you can see this. So a lot, a lot of people are gonna notice that, right? So black on black. That's my survival knife of choice. I would probably go with a larger blade, but you may be different. I mean, you may say, well, all I need is like a Mora knife. And that's completely good. You're gonna save weight over me and my choice because again, my bug out kit has some weight. This is part of it. But I'm going with a little bit of firepower for my equation in case I have to get into dead wood uh, to start a fire and stay warm. Plus, I, I'm kind of siding 
I know secondarily as a weapon equation. I'd rather have this in a short stubby fixed blade knife. Now we go into this right here and this is my toolkit. I was thinking is my first aid kit and I actually have these labeled on the outside but there's stuff I'm not going to show you on the labeling because you don't need to see it. Let's, uh, let me show you the container first. So I got these containers uh, on clearance. They're actually shower caddies. They're Columbia shower caddies. I think I mentioned them in my level two plus first aid kits or my level two first aid kit videos. And I actually made a container video too saying, hey, these are new containers you use for your first aid kits. And I believe in that video I said, stay tuned. I'm gonna tell you another use for them. Boom, here we are, finally. And I'm showing you what the use is. So you can break out and organize your tool selection for your bug out kit in a separate container. I did say in the bug out kit, I'm not really putting things in specifically like this goes here, this goes here. But when you come to small items, you kind of have to have an organizational system because that way they don't get lost. They don't bounce around the kit. They don't tear the fabric. That's what I do. What do I have in here? Uh, a lot actually. And these are decisions I thought about and maybe you'll differ. I have a lanyard for my whistle, my rape whistle. Right here it's a quick detachable lanyard too, so it's not just 550 cord. So if someone yanks it, they can't take me down with it. It doesn't weigh too much. Because I'm going to have my whistle on me all the time for signaling and actually for warning people, for sure. I have some twine. This is just basically, I think, duck decoy twine I got. 100 foot of twine. I have WD-40 in a small container, right? And then I have batteries for my flashlight, which I've already shown you, but you're gonna see it again, the S20. Let me talk a little bit about this because this is important. I wanna spare you guys a lot of grief. I used to integrate into my bug out kit triple A battery uh, lights, like a headlamp, and I have it here. It was super seated. Well, that light and I had another one too. Oh, you guys are gonna dig this because this is lessons from the Nut and Fancy clan. Where did it go? Okay, the first light I had in my bug out kit was actually this one. It's a great light and I put an LED conversion lens in it or bulb. So this is basically a mag light D battery. So this was in our kit forever because it's heavy and big, but it was super reliable and it's before all those cool lighting products came out and I could also use it as a weapon, as a baton. And I just knew I could rely on this. And I got it on sale at like Target or something back in 2006 and it didn't cost me much at all. Uh, but I've replaced this because it's too darn big. Too darn big, man. And then I had a AAA headlamp. I hope it's in here. It may not be in here. Here it is. It's a black diamond headlamp and it's actually pretty decent, but it's kind of first generation lighting technology and it's based on AAA bats. That's not exactly awesome and here's why. Because tr I found AAA battery lighting systems don't last that long, duh. I say duh because there's a lot of people that advocate them for EDC and I was one of them for a long time. Like I'd review the next torch, the Prion ones, the Prion twos and I said, this is a go-to EDC system. For EDC, rule of law, you have access to more batteries easily. I would still say that's a fair thing to say. But when you go to an extended bug out kit system don't use these batteries number one they don't have a lot of juice and number two they love to corrode on you in fact i had batteries stupidly placed inside this black diamond headlamp and when i overhauled it I opened it completely corroded imagine that i know i sh probably should have stored them outside but i stored these ones outside the lamp and they're still corroded they have battery acid leaking out of them these are Duracells, they're dated probably 2006 or something, um, but they probably leaked, I don't know, six years in their life cycle. I don't, use, I don't use them no more. So what I'm saying is a CR123 battery system and don't use 18650s, use CR123 lithium batteries. I've never had these corrode on me. Never had them explode on me. They're reliable power sources. I think I have a total of six in here, but you're seeing four of them right now. Uh, in my first generation bug out kit lighting system, I also had these crank up lights right here. And they're okay, they have a radio built in them. 
Uh, I probably ought to throw one back in there because I think there's an extendable antenna. Yeah, look at that. So you can actually crank it up and listen to FM or AM radio if it's functioning and get some news of what's going on. Uh, but they're heavy and you got to wind them up and they have, a, I think, a NICAD battery in them. And I, I don't know. I, for now, I just bailed on them. Uh, but I probably will throw one back in just to have a radio capability. So wind up LED lights. What I'm saying is go with a battery powered lighting system. Remember the time frame that I'm advocating and saying would happen. So the batteries, I'll get to light here in a second. I have super glue. We can use that medically too to seal wounds. I have a Timex Marathon, my old one. Have a digital watch there. Already set. Have the battery changed every so often. Maybe have an extra battery. Well, maybe not that because it's hard to replace, but uh, these are inexpensive. They're awesome. I wore this is well, before I became a watch guy in TMP. This is what I wore. Different sizes, but this is such a great watch. It just works. Waterproof. They're bulletproof. You definitely want a watch to keep track of time. Have a vomit sack, storage sack. It's just a heavy duty sack. Thread to sew with. Rim oil for tools. You're going to see some tools come out. You're going to see a sewing kit come out, I believe. Writing instruments, and I have Gorilla Tape over a credit card here, so this is my duct tape. Have Sharpies and a writing, two writing instruments in there. Uh, stainless steel safety pins, and I have waterproof write, uh, write in the rain paper and sandpapers in here too, like 400 grit sandpaper for sharpening and miscellaneous, miscellaneous purposes. Have that. More safety pins, more bobbins, needles, and thread. Remember the sewing kit? This is it. Simple, not much to it. I have little tiny rubber bands in here, medium-sized rubber bands. I probably ought to upgrade those to some bigger bands. And then it's all kept in a plastic sack and the needles are what I'll sew with. Uh, that's a lesson, by the way, from me backpacking. I was backpacking one year. We're about five miles in and one of my pack straps broke. And it was a heavy pack. Was, Tactical Doodle was a little baby at the time. I was with Mrs. Nothing Fancy. And the way I repaired it is I had a needle with me and I took, I spooled off some six pound monofilament off my fishing reel and I repaired it right there on the trail. But it, I couldn't have done it had I not had a needle and a sewing kit. So again, lessons of backpacking coming in play. Single edge stainless steel razor blades. These are called Hero foam, foam plugs. I told you hearing protection, definitely have that. And these are easy to carry, super lightweight, don't weigh nothing. I actually have two lighting systems. I did forget to tell you that. This is an older, but still pretty awesome, four sevens Quark Mini AA light. And I was smart enough finally to store it with a battery out of it, right here. This is not a AAA battery light though. And it's just simple twist UI. I've ran these EDC forever. They're really good lights. They have a super strong clip on them. It's a backup light, but I carry lithium batteries with it. And these will store a long time, and I've never seen the lithium batteries corrode ever. Bigger rubber bands, oh, I said put them in, I already did. Have a couple Silum sticks there for singling. Are these super nice? Eh, they don't last very long, but they're so lightweight, I just kept them in for now. I think they're more hokey than anything, Silum sticks. But day one, day two of the bug out situation, would they be nice to have? Probably. Look at this weird tool that I incorporated, and you guys are gonna, Maybe be surprised that I do not have a multi-tool in here, um, but I do have this and I found it. It actually is a double-headed plier system. So it has flat, traditional plier shape. I think it's meant for fishermen, but then you fold it over and then it's sharp nose pliers and it has multiple crimping capability and a wire cutting capability. And unlike a multi-tool, it has really long handles so I can get some leverage on it. It was inexpensive and it weighs probably less than some multi-tools, and so I'm gonna leave it in the kit. Now, it's not super tiny, and it's not super light, but I think this is one of those things where having some firepower, having some real plier capability would be super helpful. There's a compass with instructions. You should know how to use a compass. That's a Bruniton. There's an oil rag and a film canister for that rim oil, so I can use it. These are totally awesome. This is, a brand is called Allway. It's an electrician's multi-bit screwdriver and here's the bits that come in it. So it has uh, slotted heads and Phillips heads. I have used these in the shop forever and they weigh like, I don't know, two and a half ounces or nothing. Fiberglass shank. So between these two tool tools right here, I have a lot of multi-tool capabilities. So like a Leatherman, I mean, a lot of what Leatherman does is trying to replicate this. 
potable agua. I have a water filtration, but I also have some chemicals to disinfect and purify water. I recommend you do too. Uh, these are in glass bottles, but you have, these have to be stored in a certain way. And you'll notice that usually, I don't know if these are, but a lot of times in the military, the lids were waxed because whether it's iodine tablets or a potable agua, they cannot be exposed to oxygen if I'm remembering right. So it's a little bit heavier with those glass bottles. I wish they had used a lighter weight container, but it's a good backup. And again, water, food, and shelter, those are your primary things. So I have a redundant system for water. I have zip ties in here, and I think I have more than I'm gonna show you right here. These are just my small ones. Nice to have. <clears throat> what do you know, I have more paint strainers. Oh, here's, here, I was telling you not to use the cone ones, and here I have some cone ones. Duh! So it's a paper conical paint strainer meant for latex paint uh, to get out the particulates prior to me water filtering them. Electrical tape, I use orange. This is a great labeling tape. You can write on it with your Sharpie. I use it all the time. You may see me labeling my guns for review that way. Here's more zip ties. And the way I store them is I just wrap electrical tape. Well, speak of the devil. Colored electrical tape right there, ladies and gentlemen. Zip ties, I should probably have more. They're so helpful. You can repair things with them. I remember I told you that handle in part two, if it broke off, I'd use a PVC tube, zip tie it on. Here's my zip ties. All they gotta do is cut off a piece of PVC for it. Here's my fire kit. I've done videos on fire making my kit. It has trioxane in it, multiple lighters, flint steel. Um, and that's it. Really good. That's a Swedish fire steel in there with a striker. But, and I have those uh, lifeboat matches, which are outstanding. That's a good fire kit. I may maybe tweak that a little bit. There's some other stuff I might put in there. There's a singling mirror. Remember, if we go to singling mode, I labeled it in case someone else finds this and needs it. I have a red side. I have a silver side. Instructions are in there. Then I wrapped with Gorilla Clear Tape this plastic container for it so it doesn't rip up. Voice of experience. Any plastic container or bag that you have will get torn up. So you want to reinforce it over time. Then I have some extra heavy plastic bags here for storage. Have more writing material here. And then I have, again, S20 light. That's my primary source of light, this one right here. Primary. And then I have the backup of that double A version as well. Let me see if I got to everything in the toolkit. I think that's most everything. And if I miss something, sorry, I got a rip. Now, next up, oh, here's my pocket rocket jammed into a corner. These are awesome stoves. They're very compact, very effective. The pocket rocket, epic capability. Not too heavy uh, for what it does. I mean, it boils water like that, even at altitude. And then we come to my first aid kit. I'm just gonna peek into this because I've done a lot of videos on my first aid stuff. What you're gonna see here is probably a level two first aid kit with its capabilities. And this again is a shower caddy from Columbia. And look at it's damaged because in storage, in inside the first aid kit, once upon a year, I had this big old bottle of iodine and look what happened. It breached, leaked all over, and I even had it in a plastic bag which helped minimize the damage, but the damage was done. And it basically, when I came in to overhaul this kit and check on it, and I was like, oh crap, There's, it's all over the place. So I had to clean it up. But the, the container's still serviceable. You can see it's like you know, occluded the windows here. But in here I'll have heavy blood capabilities. I have a scalpel, sponges, all types of band-aids. I have alcohol wipes. Uh, again, go look at my level two video. For instance, there's a abdominal pad. I've got three of those in there. I, I put it, actually, I got more than that. I have as many as I can possibly fit because in a bug out situation, I'm thinking massive trauma. So there's gonna be dudes with bad injury, injuries that might be me. And I want to build ability as much as I can with SAWC to treat it. And I, you know, I have some pretty good first aid knowledge. I'm not gonna say I'm a, you know, a paramedic or anything, but I can take care of stuff. Uh, there's a suturing kit in this bug out kit. There's a dental kit here. Have various meds, all labeled and I think dated somewhere. I even had some old Percocet in there, way old. I mean, that's probably 15 years old, but it's still in there. Probably would still be good if I needed it. After bites in there. I don't have any cold compresses, they're too heavy to carry. 
This is kind of my disinfectant, and this is called a transport tube, this container. A TMP -er in Patreon was asking me how I did it. He's like, you ought to get this. I said, well, the transport tube is the best I found. Hydrogen peroxide. It works great. Super quick rush through on this. Uh, Band-aids, finger splint, couple tampons in there for more bleeding situations. Many as I can fit in. As many as I can fit into this container, tape, high quality scissors. Check out these scissors. I just got these off Amazon. These are awesome EMT shears. Higher quality than other crap. Weigh just slightly more because they have higher quality steel. There's that Microspore 3M, or what they call this, Transpore medical tape. My favorite. Well, I don't use paper tape. I do have some cloth tape for wrapping up injuries like on my wrist, I might need this. On your ankle, you might need it. And I have other stuff in there. Level two first aid kit. Uh, again, I'll put a card in there and you go and see where it is. It's gonna be basically the same. I changed my first aid kits over time, but overall they stay pretty much the same. Okay, so in this zip lid of the AT8 wheeled duffel, I have a large, very heavy duty uh, lawn and leaf bag for multiple purposes. Uh, I recommend putting at least one of those in there. I'm pretty sure you're gonna find a use for it some way. And then I have an old, this is like a parachute pack and I don't wanna promote the brand, but it's just a basic backpack. I'm gonna put this off right here. There you go. So it's a lightweight foldable day pack and it's going in the top lid of my BOK so as I bug out and I go to certain locations, I have a backpack and I don't have to take my whole pack. Highly recommended. Go to my stowaway backpack video. I posted that a couple months ago and it shows you some really inexpensive stowaway backpacks that you can get. They weigh like six, eight ounces, put them in your lid and that way you can carry your stuff because I think what you're gonna do is establish a base of operations with your bug out kit. You'll find a location at least temporarily where you can catch your breath, take stock what's going on, take stock what your game plan is going to be. Maybe you have to go out and scout. And when you go scouting, maybe you take your weapon with you, your first aid kit with you, maybe some food and water with you. How are you going to carry it? You're going to take this big pack? No, you're going to take your day pack. Always thinking. Napkins, more uh, basically tissue. I don't, and I actually had tissue in here. Let me see if I have a representation of that. Yeah, I do. I used to have this stuff in here, but don't take Kleenex. Kleenex is weenie. It, it just is awful. It doesn't absorb that much. They're tiny. It's better than nothing, but what I found is these uh, Bounty napkins, just plain white napkins in a Ziploc are perfect. They're soft if you have to blow your nose to, with them, and they're durable. You can use them over and over again. Napkins and those blue towels are what I'm using for my paper products. And I think that's everything in the top lid. Where are we at? All right, I think I'm gonna be able to do this in a single part. I'm probably gonna go over an hour, bear with me. I'm going as fast as I can. I, my overall take is I'm going through this container, I like it. This is a good container. And I forgot to show you on this, this High Sierra uh, wheel duffel. I think it's like a 32 or 36 inch wheel duffel. The zipper on the lower compartment, I didn't show you in part two, is actually heavy duty. This zipper right here, look. That's a really good zipper. And that's where I'd want a zipper because it's going to have some weight bearing on it. And remember, this is a compartmented bug out kit container, which I like. So on the top half, I have all the stuff I've shown you. First aid kit, tools, I had a knife there, had my eyewear, uh, the, the microfiber towels. And then when I lift this part up, lo and behold, I have a completely different section. And uh, I could angle the camera down, but I think I'm just going to pull it out. Uh, little by little and I'll show you what I'm looking at is just flat flattened there and uh, Let's get to it mountain house food again. I'm jamming it in every location. I can More MREs look at this dudes How many do I have I got one two three four five Six I have seven MREs That's a lot of weight. I'm not going to tell you. It's not a lot of weight plus just for me. I have what did I bring out already? One, two, probably about the equal number, seven freeze-dried meals in there too. What flavors do I got? Uh, garden green peas. Yeah, you need vegetables for sure. Chicken stew, I've had that, it's not bad. Beef stew, I've had that with hot sauce and salt, it's not too bad. Chili mac and beef, I've had that, that with hot sauce and, and stuff, it's not too bad. Whew. 
food, 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 food. Put as much in as you can possibly carry. Trust me, you're gonna need it. Remember that sun hat I told you about? Boom, here it is. It's a brimmed Aussie style sun hat. I have a whole video on sun hats. This is excellent, I got it on sale. You can crumple it up in a pocket and it prevents you from just, I don't know, getting fried out there. Fried, have a sun hat and it doesn't weigh that much. And again, it's synthetic subplex nylon so it'll dry very quickly. But when I'm setting stuff out in the desert, dudes, sun hat always. I don't always show it on camera because it looks stupid, but uh, I am wearing it. These are Lexan forks and spoons and they are awesome. I highly recommend them. Uh, these are bright orange color so I don't lose them. I think I might even have a spork in there. Probably gotta take that out, I hate sporks. What do they do, sporks? Just have a dedicated spoon and fork. I gotta upgrade that. That's probably from 2006. But you, you'll see an MRE spoon in there too. And they're also in this. Each MRE usually has uh, self-contained utensils in them. Uh, so that's kind of extra. I don't use plastic wear, like something you buy at Walmart or Target. That stuff snaps in half. Go reference some of my EDC videos. I've talked about these Lexan um, silverware stuff forever. I'll show you that in a second. More garbage bags right here. These are higher quality ones. Now these are smaller, I think like 15 or 20 gallon garbage bags. I guarantee you, you're gonna find a use for them. One of my things that I have, uh, my health things, I told you I, was, I wasn't gonna show you my personal stuff, but I'll show you this. I've got a knee brace with me because my knee's always bad. I've had two knee surgeries, uh, two ACL replacements, 50% of my meniscus taken out. Uh, total of four surgeries. Yeah, it's a wonder that it's not doing worse. So part of my stuff that I carry is glucosamine. So I'll have glucosamine with me and plenty of Viagra. I just made that part up about Viagra. <laughs> Knife sharpener. Look at this, dudes. Easy Lap Diamond. So important to me to have a sharp blade that I even put a dedicated knife sharpener in my BOK. What up? What up, y'all? That is incredible. Knife sharpener, that's crazy. Okay, here's my toiletry thing. It's in just a normal shaving kit. And in here, I will have sunscreen, lip balm. What is that called? Just like foot powder, body powder. I love that stuff. Gold bond powder, awesome. Uh, for whatever reason, I have like shaving gel in there. That's kind of heavy. I don't know if I should keep that in there, but I don't have an electric razor. I might want to shave. Mm, I don't know if I want to lather up or have even water to lather up. So for now it's in there. Again, I can pitch it if I want or cash it. Uh, I have deodorant in here. Do I need that? Mm, probably. You don't want to be stinking too bad. Soap. Then I have these really cool bought on sale. I told you I'm always buying stuff on sale. These little soap, uh, what do they call them? Like these little, I don't know, they're strips. You just put them in your hand, a little bit of water, and you can clean your hands with it. And then bar soap. That's the way I can soap up and clean. In a first aid situation, that's important. If I'm dressing a wound, I want clean hands. I want to minimize infection. Expect there's going to be a lot of um, problems with hygiene, with sanitation. All those services could cease. Plan accordingly. I have hand sanitizer here. Another lip balm. Floss. Toothbrush with a lid on it. Q-tips, another bar of soap, taken from a hotel, no doubt. Disposable shaver, comb, although more and more I don't need that. And then I have this to store bar soap. It's just basically used to polish shoes at hotels. It's kind of useful. And here's some of my health stuff. I have stool softener, multivitamins, and fiber caplets and glucosamine in here. And don't laugh with that stool softener and fiber stuff. When you're eating MREs, dude, it will stop you up. And it can be a big problem. You can get constipated to a level where it is a health concern. You're gonna have people come to this video and go, yes, you need to have laxative of some sort. I also have um, lopramide for diarrhea in my first aid kit, but this is more like health related. So it goes into the, uh, the toiletries. More soap. Oh, this is apple scented. How nice. Toothpaste. Small sizes. See, remember our time schedule, we our time frame. We just, a week, maybe two weeks, more floss. And that's my toiletry kit. Again, adapt it to what you need. Moving on, we're just coming up on an hour or so. Uh, now we're gonna get to, uh, I'll do weapons last. Right now I'm gonna do uh, shelter. This is something you might want to spend some time thinking about what kind of shelter you want. What I'm putting in here is a freaking Kelty Gunnison 2. Look at this. 
So I have a two person, no kidding, backpackable, awesome tent. I reviewed this back in like 2010 or so, the Gunnison 2. I'm not gonna take it out, obviously. It's just a great backpack tent. And I don't think for what it does and what it provides you is it's that heavy. You can actually fit three people in there. Two easily, one is like luxurious. But think about it, you bug out, you go to a location. What I say the three main things were, food, water, shelter. This is my shelter. It's self-supporting. I don't have to stake it out. What if I'm sitting on rocky soil? I don't care. The Kelty Gunnison, I don't have to stake the tent itself out. And I actually have a footprint for it as well. Uh, right here. So that's a Kelty Gunnison footprint. So it's nylon. That way if it's wet, muddy, I put the tent on that. Now I have a dry home that I can get into. Then I can break open my MRE, take a breather, take stock of what's going on. I have my place. To me, it's worth the wait. You know, maybe you want to go with a tube tent. You go, oh, a tube tent's fine. Maybe you want to go with a clip flashlight, a lighter weight single person tent. I would recommend that. I would have a self, actually the clip you actually have to stake out. But I would recommend a self-standing tent and you'll be okay. The Kelty Gunnison 2, at least the last time I looked at it, I didn't see any better options for the price I was willing to spend. You know, I wanted something super light. I wanted it to be two person. Maybe you can go out and find something on clearance uh, for like, uh, I don't know, 80 bucks or something. I think that brand Recluse Tents, I reviewed one of those. They were outstanding. They're kind of knockoffs on some more popular brands like North Face, but maybe they make something smaller. I haven't checked it in with them for a while. Right now, I have no intention of replacing my Kelty Gunnison. It's heavy though, you know, it's adding weight, but it's good weight in my estimation. Along with this, so this is a sleeping bag. I'm trying to fi find out which one it is. It's just a down sleeping bag. I think it's 20 degree rated. Long because I'm tall, I'm 6'3", and look at how small that compacts. Uh, and yeah, I, this is an aftermarket outdoor research stuff sack. This is an awesome bag right here, dudes. Awesome. Um, find that on sale too. I'll put some links below. Do you want to go heavier than 20 degree rated? Maybe. That's a big maybe. Uh, dang, I'm running out of card space. Ugh, I still got to talk about weapons. Uh, can I do it in four minutes? I'm going to try. Okay. So uh, get a sleeping bag down because it can compact. It doesn't lose loft over time. Keep it dry because if you get it wet, it doesn't work. Uh, weapons. I go with 22s, dude. 22s. This is my Smith & Wesson Model 422, 12 rounds capability. It's in, a Smith, uh, it's in an Uncle Mike's size 5 holster. This is my defensive weapon. I don't go center fire. I don't go AR-15. I don't even go 9mm. I go with a 22. And this is, again, the older version with 12 round magazines. I got three mags with it. It's in a shoulder holster. Yeah, it's a 22, but with 12 rounds, with good ma uh, marksmanship, it'll do the job. It's primarily for game. And this I bought in 1994. This Smith & Wesson Model 422. Doesn't weigh that much. And here's my extra ammunition for it. All high quality CCI mini mags. I carry four of them. This is heavy, but look what I got. I got 400 rounds, bro. 400 rounds of ammunition. And not only that, wait, there's more. This is not my primary armament. It could be. I could just run a 22 pistol and call it good. And you could run a Ruger pistol, uh, any of the newer pistols that I've reviewed, they would be good as well. But I also have the awesome best bug out kit gun I've ever found, and I've always said that on tabletop review, Marlin Papoose, ladies and gentlemen. The Marlin Papoose. And I've had this one, I think, since like 1996. It's not dura-coated or nothing. And here's my bug out kit gun, the Marlin Papoose. Yeah, it weighs something, but now I've got the, what is this, a 20 round magazine that works. I've got two 10 rounders, three 10 rounders with it. I have a simple Weaver four power scope. Here's the barrel, here's the barrel wrench. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, why a rifle? Because it's longer range, it's higher velocity, it's more capable. Uh, you know, if I have a rabbit, it's my only source of protein and it's like 50 yards out, am I gonna hit it with that 22 pistol? Probably not, but with a Marlin Papoose, uh, probably yes. Reliable, it is weight, but it's good. And the, this is where I think dudes, you know, common chambering makes sense. So I have a 22 pistol and a 22 rifle. And also, since I'm carrying two weapons in the bug out kit, 
I can actually give it to a friend that's not prepared. And so now I have double defensive capability. I have the rifle, he has the pistol, and now we have two guns to guard the camp or two guns to go out and procure game. Procure game. I think 22 long rifle is still the best bug out kit caliber, hands down. I can carry more rounds. They are lighter weight. They're adequately effective with good marksmanship, especially out of a longer barrel like a Marlin Papoose. Um, I don't see 22 mag as being better. It weighs more. Uh, the, the, the guns that fire it are less reliable. 22. You might go with a 5728. That would be a good bug out kit caliber, but it's more expensive and you might look at the weight issue on it. But like an FN 57, that could be a good bug out kit gun. A uh, lot of rounds, pretty capable caliber. <clears throat> if you get the right load for it, take a look at it. Uh, I'm out of time. Woo, bug out kit. Uh, I've talked about the gun thing a lot. I'll do it more in the reviews. Oh, by the way, I have these stakes for the Gunnison too. Really good stakes are important. It makes your shelter awesome. All right, wrapping it up right now. Don't bug out unless you have to. Make a bug out kit for everyone. It's super important. It could save your life. Don't anticipate society is going to come crashing down. It may or may not. It might be a localized event. If it is, if you have a bug out kit, grab the kids, grab the dog, leave the cat, and bug out. And then get back to your house, fix it back up. Rule of law will come back into existence, but I cannot tell you the peace of mind you will have after making your own bug out kit to this this le level, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing fancy, in the annex, stickers in the back. Thanks for watching, make sure you sub, join Patreon. Literally, I'm running out of SD card space. <sighs> See you later.